My name is Michael Flower. Welcome to part two of the Ingress Database Workbench series. In this part, we're going to be looking at managing data within Ingress tables using the Ingress Database Workbench. We're going to be using, again, the same host as we've had before, the one that we set up in the previous section. So we've got a, a SUSE Linux desktop here. I'm going to launch Ingress Database Workbench from in here by double clicking on the IDW bin icon. That will launch Ingress Database Workbench to connect through to our local database connection, the one that we created in part one of this series. Here we have our database connection that we'd already set up, so I'm just going to expand the panes on the left-hand side here, click on New Ingress, and it will say, OK, is this the one that we're interested in? Yes. OK. And it will then show us all the schema relating to this connection. Demo DB. That's the one we created before. And if we drill down and look at the schemas, we should be able to see in there some tables. If you expand the list of tables, we'll be able to see some of the other panes and what they're for as well. So if we look at all the tables which are in our database, we'll be able to see now we've got a table here called, for instance, um, one called airline. And by right using on the right hand panes here, we've got a database object details. We can start to see then details about a particular table. So if you highlight another table such as airport, it will show us the information about that one table. So here we have a table called airport. And these are the columns, app ID and so on, which are in that particular table. Now let's concentrate on the airport table for a moment. Let's right click on airport. And we're going to now generate a select statement based on the airport table. So generate a select statement. And in the top right hand pane now, it will bring us up a, a separate pane where we can actually build a select statement. Or it will build one for us, but we can add to it if we wish. So we now have within this pane a, a scrapbook pane where we can add e extra pieces within this piece of SQL. Or we can simply by saying uh, right click here. We can say execute all. And it will, select, it will actually run that uh, select statement in real time and pass back the results into the bottom pane here in the bottom right hand corner. We see a status and a result pane. So these are a list of all the airports which are in this database. This is an interactive environment. We can actually, by going back into the SQL pane again now, I'm going to add in uh, a WHERE clause. OK, so let's say that we're not interested in all the, um, all the airports. We only want to look at an, uh, information for a particular airport. So I'm going to say WHERE. Now, it'll actually say now which columns and which tables do you want to restrict against. I'm going to put in the airport table dot. And as soon as I specify the dot, it'll list me all the columns for that particular table as well. App ID equals 8093. I happen to know one of them already. And by right clicking again, execute all. It'll then run that query through. And in the bottom right corner again now, we can see the result of that particular select statement. OK, let's close this uh, scrapbook pane down for a moment. OK, we're now going to do something which is to uh, not save the changes for now. We're going to actually look at all of the data within the airport table. OK, what we're going to do is by right clicking on airport again, this time we're going to say uh, data, and we want to just edit the data. And in the top right pane now, we'll actually see a pane of all the data for this particular table, all the airport IDs, the columns, and so on. And this is uh, not just a passive screen. We can actually change the data from in here. So if I wish, I can scroll across. And let's have a look at Amsterdam Schiphol. We can, if we wish, change that to, for instance, to say Amsterdam. OK, and we can save that change. Um, if we wish, we can even add an extra row in here. So if I uh, drill down and notice there that the change has been highlighted in yellow. Um, and we can, if I scroll down to the bottom, we can add a new row. So let's add a new airport, airport 1234, uh, an airport ID, SIT, um, a lesser known airport, Sheffield International. And the country code, I'll, I'll put this one in Britain, a very un, lesser known airport for now. Uh, we can right click within anywhere on the screen and say save those changes. 
and what it'll do then it'll add all that data into our database and notice in the status messages now it's inserted one row and updated one row as well let's close the pane for the airport table 